very much, guys. Uh, indeed, it's Giants that will be moving on to the winner's finals. That is tomorrow. Reason is not out yet. And let's talk about their third game here because they were taking a page out of Giants' book in their draft. What do you think they were looking for doing here? Well, it's very normal if you lose two games to pretty much the same comp and you don't really have an answer ready. You just start taking their champions. However, it's often not the solution because this team, I mean, Giants has obviously been practicing this comp a lot. They knew exactly how to play it. We saw Kuban. He decided to do the same start with Jax at level one where he started Merc Wolves here, which took a li little bit of time, but it was actually okay because he got to top lane at level two and didn't lose out too much. Yeah, if you, if you have in mind that you play against a team that stars on Raptors a lot with Jax, you know they're going to contest it, and that's what Giants is. They walked into the enemy jungle, put a couple of wards down, had full vision there, so I really like what Kuban did in terms of adaptation there. Yes, he went to the Wolves. Yes, it took him a long time to clear them, and people may think like, you know, he just lost yeah. an entire wave on top lane. He's coming back and he pretty much is even with Renekton. But in the Jax Renekton matchup, being even means you're ahead. It's kind of counterintuitive because you, if you look at the, how the matchup plays out normally, level one to six, you'll get bullied a lot. And even later, you saw it later, the Renekton was constantly almost 1v2ing up top. So I want to give props to Reason here for staying equal. The Jax was never dove by Elise and Renekton combination, which Giants could have or should have even set up. So. I'll, Reason Gaming, a lot better in the early mid game and a good adaptation coming out of the top lane. Yeah, again also we saw Lee Sin being picked up yeah. finally and actually some early pressure, a lot of ganks happening. They definitely changed the playstyle and the comp. It just wasn't enough because again in the mid lane, Pepe Nero on LeBlanc has just been absolutely insane. Game one, it was first pick, we were like, oh, you give Gnarly Sandra away, is it, is it smart? When this guy can play LeBlanc like this, it is. First pick again. The guy went 12-3-3. Three, and three. I mean, <laughs> you just solo carry the game. You run around, do whatever you want. He kept finding picks. The warning, we have talked about it before with recent gaming. It has been a problem, and it was again. Like, when they lose the top tower, it's, it will happen when Renekton is against Jax. Renekton will be able to take down that tower. As soon as the tower goes down, you have to be able to ward your own jungle. Otherwise, an easy rotation from Giants is just moving through the jungle from mid lane to top lane. They did it a few times, got a few kills on it, and it helped really snowball the game for them. We're highlighting Pepinero here, and we're, say we're saying he has this 12-3-3 three three score. But if you look at his lane opponent immediately, we had the Take Fun finishing the game 7-2-2. Two two. That only means Take Fun died two times. And this highlights why Giants is winning a lot of these games. Pepinero holds his own in his own lane, mm -hmm. translates that advantage, not in his mid lane all the time. No, he, he roams to the sides and starts winning other matchups for those people while still maintaining the chance or the possibility to 1v1 mid whenever needed or whenever possible. So he's basically playing the entire map and I really like what Giants is doing there. I think they can optimize it better, yeah. they can ward better, they can transition better, but it's, it is obvious that Pepe Nero is definitely influencing the entire game. Absolutely, and when we went into this, we knew that they had a very good synergy jungle in mid, but at this point, if your mid can roam itself and make plays for other lanes, that is of course very good. Talking about the junglers, this time Elise for Frederick and um, going for the Stalker's Blade, but Magasin channel on this one. Yeah, so that is a little bit different from what we normally see here. I mean, we often see Juggernaut on, on Elise because you want to get the 5 on HP, you want to be tanking these team fights, and because you don't really shine too much, you just become a tank and a cocoon bot in these fights. Instead, though, he wanted to make some plays. He wanted to have this single target burst damage you get by going Magus. It's, it's not the best, we don't see it very often, but if you can manage to land a cocoon here, and if you can actually find the Lee Sin in a gank, you have enough burst damage combined with a LeBlanc or Renekton to actually take down a target super, super fast and suddenly win the 2v2. Looking at the Giants lineup though, aside from LeBlanc, they were gonna run low on damage. Ezreal well has a lot of sustained like poke damage, but his all-in is not that strong there. Alistar doesn't really provide much. Renekton falls off a little bit as well, so having a little more punch on yeah, the jungle. Yeah, a little bit. I think that was the reasoning for Frederick going here. And they basically want to just have a lot of threats that they just that Reason doesn't know how to deal with it. However, Reason kept him in check, you know. Frederick did. didn't get they any did. ganks off in the early game. So I was really hoping that Reason could, could bounce back from this. They fixed their problems they had in the first three games, but then Giants just, even without a big lead, still managed to play the same mid to late game where they got a lot of picks, a lot quicker movement yeah, from Pepe Nero. It's so much about the way Giants play the map and how Reason Gaming are so slow to react. They're always trailing behind. Like suddenly Oriana shows up in the top lane when a guy is already dead. She can't make any plays with, with the ball here. Plays it defensively suddenly, misses out on a few kills. And it happened again and again. And just also to go back on Elise, when you play these like pick comps, Having the Magus is not bad, again, because if you land a Cocoon, you can single target down a target. And it worked for them. Ezreal's built with the Essence Reaver. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring it up. 
I'm not the biggest fan of, of it. I feel like you delay your core items too much. You want to get your more mana as fast as possible, so you get it, uh, the mana immune, so you can start stacking it on auto attack as well. Then you go into an Iceborne Gauntlet, and then you can either go Blade of the Ruin King or Last Whisper. Essence Reaver just kind of doesn't really fit in and just delays you a little bit too much, but uh, it worked out in this game also because the rest of the team did so well. But in general, would you still opt for the blue build on Ezreal as yourself? or? I think blue build is back and I think it's super good because there's so much about poking now and kiting these team fights is around objectives. If you manage to land a few mystic shots, it's super effective. You get people very low. And also in the laning phase, the problem is, I mean, the problem with the blue build is your laning phase is not super strong because you go tier as your first item. So you can never really trade. You just sit back and you farm. But when you have an Alistar support, you can just basically sit heal and just last it with your Q. However, it does suit Giant's style, and I think we can ask him about that later once we get a player here for the interview. It feels like they play mid, top, and jungle yeah. together as a trio, and then they leave their bot lane just to like, just survive, play these champions, make sure you guys are okay, and then just join us in the mid game, and it seems to that style to work. However, you were talking about, um, about objective-based gameplay earlier. I feel like this entire series was very little about true, actually playing true. around objectives and more it ended up being just one big brawl fest where people would <laughs> end up killing each other, chasing each other, dying, chasing the other party again. Those guys would respawn. We saw at the end of this game around tier 2 bottom tower that was already down. People were endlessly fighting yeah. for what seemed to be no reason other than stat padding KDA. So no reason, good one there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good reason, I guess. Um, one final thing I'd like to touch on before we uh, continue is Renekton. Renekton is back, and we see that they go, uh, as we saw also in OGN, very damage-focused very early, but as we saw here, then going into the full tangent later. Yeah, so the early damage is simply to pressure the Jax early on because he doesn't really have any kill pressure on you when you have your ulti, and if you can return the damage to him, as long as you dodge around the Counter-Strike, you can actually kill him. You can even dive him if Elise had actually come up to the lane, which could have been the plan. But there was a lot of uh, jungle action going on from recent side as well, which probably stopped it. And they didn't have to as soon as LeBan got rolling as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, now I'd very much like to welcome Rydal to our desk, uh, who is the support player for Giant. So congratulations first off, not just winning, but 3-0-ing here. Um, it did go pretty good for you guys, I would say. Is that what you expected when you went into the series? Um, we part as a favorite team, I think. Uh, but we didn't expect the the 3-0 in the series. Uh, we are a bit afraid of, uh, about the third game because we saw a lot of teams um, come back in a 3-0 and, and I don't know, I, I'm super happy, but uh, this is not the end, of course. No, absolutely not. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the games and then specifically we know that your uh, partner, Adri, loves to play Jinx, but it is a huge risk pulling it out in that first game that it worked out and at second as well. Um, why did you stick with that or why did you dare to go for that immediately off the bat in the first game? Yeah, I think I think Jinx is a very good pick in team fights, uh, especially in our play style because uh, we like to, to move a lot and we, we like to do rotations. If they take Drake, we take mid. If they take mid, we take Drake, you know? And with Jinx, if you, if you do a single good rotation and you take a kill, the passive is super strong. So you can start the team fight this way. And I think uh, it's not very important to win the lane. Just do a one or two kills uh, after the laning phase and Jinx is incredible. Incredible. We saw in the second game uh, Jinx switch from uh, Infinity Edge Rush to building BF Sword and then getting um, Static Shift. Is that something you guys do in certain like circumstances, or do you did you just learn that IE Rush might just not be the best and you want to go for the Shiv earlier? If you know why Adri did that, mm, I'm not sure about that. I think, for, in my opinion, I think Static Shift is better for mid game maybe. Mm -hmm. And but I don't know. It's I'll have to ask yeah. him later. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. And then talk me through uh, that last game. Of course, you know, if we win this game, we're going on to the next round. And then they took a few of your picks and you guys defaulted to having the Ezreal and the Alistar. Um, do you think they could have done more after taking a couple of your picks? Mm, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, basically about the pick and ban phase in the last game and especially that they took that Jax away, they took that Thresh away. Yeah. Um, we have a very um, comfortable picks, but uh, we play, I, I think the first and Second game, we played like the a very similar setup, mm -hmm. and we are we have very comfortable picks, but uh, but we are not only that picks. If, if they take away like stress or Jax or something like that, we we can um, count other ways, you know. So so yeah, um, if they take away a champion, it's, I think it's more like setup uh, as as a team, and 
more than individual champions. Uh, in general, now that you played competitively on 4.21, do you think it suits your playstyle better, knowing that you guys are guys that like to go in aggressive early and get those kills and then snowball into the later game? Um, we expected to play in the 4.20 pads, uh, especially because Pantheon, I think. Because Pantheon is, uh, is super good in that patch, because the passive especially. You can do the jungle very well, uh, well. you can do the, the Drake as well. And, uh, but mm, there is no very huge difference between 420 and 421. So I, I think our play style and our, our way we play it could work perfectly as well. Uh, finally, you are in the winner's final now tomorrow, and uh, you will be facing or H2K Gaming or N Faculty. After this throw, you must be very confident going into that one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, expect to, um, I expect to play versus H2K. I think they are a bit better as a team. But, uh, but anyways, we are, we are trying to, to do our best for getting the, the LCS. Well, uh, congratulations on this 3-0 to start off. It will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Rydal, and very as much. for us. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, it is our next best of five with H2K versus In Faculty. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>